I mean, I mean, well, here's the thing: we can't, we 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 have to, we have to admit that the landscape of gaming is completely changing, as it is currently. Yes. Uh, and Game Pass is doing that. Xbox and Microsoft are pioneering the way. They have not only the power, but they have the capability, um, and they're obviously flexing their muscles with this purchase. And this is a huge story. Um, to me, this is even bigger than when they bought Bethesda. Oh, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, this is this is massive. Um, so, <laughs> essentially, it was announced that uh, Microsoft was purchasing Activision Blizzard, um, or they're they're in the works of purchasing it right now. Um, they're gonna pay 68.7 billion, which is insane. And by the way, did you ever did you ever hear the rumors of people saying that Microsoft was gonna buy Sega? Yes. O yeah. Okay. So for comparison, do you know how much the market cap for Sega is? Like how much it's worth? Yeah. Uh, no. Five billion. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so. To all those people that think Microsoft, you know, might purchase, they can't. Be, be, and apparently, from what I understand, it has to do with uh, laws in Japan. So, uh, with Which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm okay I, with. I, too. I personally, I'm, I personally don't want Sega to be purchased by anyone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Basically, uh, what's going on is that Activision, uh, and, and we've covered this, you, you talked about this, Josie, um, how people have been uh, boycotting uh, Activision and uh, Blizzard over the past yes. few years due to allegations of, uh, you know, sexual harassment, um, you know, poor worker uh, treatment, and management of their... Or, uh, poor management of uh, games. Uh, you know, Warcraft Reforged comes to mind. Um, uh, the new Call of Duty Vanguard was... A lot of people hated it. Um, and, and it just... The list goes on. There's been a lot of... Basically turmoil for that company, right? Yes. And... So, Microsoft came in and they... I'm just guessing. They probably were like, look... You know, you guys are having a lot of issues. Uh, why not let us, you know, buy you out and we can take care of all these things. And um, if, I, if I may, yeah. if I may, just real quick, just to make sure. Um, and I could be wrong here, um, but I did watch a video by another YouTuber, YouTuber Yang Ya, about the situation. And actually, Bobby Kotick, um, the CEO of Activision Blizzard, who will soon not be. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, he stepped down. Had a few right? ideas. Had, had a few ideas um, of 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 trying to salvage the public representation of the company um, by first thinking of purchasing Kotaku or PC Gamer, mm -hmm. uh, some media outlets, in order to kind of control what was going out through the media. And that's uh, that's the that's the. But you know what? I'm glad you said that because that's the way these people think. Um, but but then when it came to kind of push comes to shove that the the idea of selling the company was really being pushed by shareholders, uh, the they were they were actually negotiating with multiple companies, not just Microsoft. Okay, and they were looking at big companies too. Um, Sony was even part of that. Okay, so so Microsoft are the ones that ha are the. The, the highest bidders and I think the ones that were willing to take the brunt of the social issues that are occurring with Activision Blizzard and kind of I guess change it realign it for the better yeah that makes sense so um all right so that's but 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 that, that's me reporting off of someone else's reporting okay. so no young take young that with pretty grain. good I I, yeah, I I trust I him. agree um okay yeah so let's uh Oh, oh, also, there's another thing, um, and I read this just before the show, and it's in this article here. There's a studio um, that is actually unionizing 
under uh, Activision Blizzard. And I, I oh. the, let me see if I can find the name. So you're saying the, the, the writing's on the wall. <laughs> well, it, they actually asked Phil Spencer about it. So here we go. Spencer said the Activision Blizzard acquisition process began towards the end of 2021. And part of that process included Microsoft absorbing the many reported challenges Activision Blizzard has faced over the past year, including the lawsuits alleging uh, charges of gender-based discrimination and sexual harassment, as well as a nascent effort to unionize by the company's workers. So <clears throat> there is one of the studios uh, apparently has already unionized. They just passed their union vote from what I heard. Nice. Um, okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at what he thinks of some of these things because it's very important to know what's on his mind because he's the one who makes a lot of these decisions. Um, yes. <clears throat> okay. I was looking at the IP list. I mean, let's go, Spencer said. King's Quest, Guitar Hero. I should know this, but I think they got Hexen. Um, and... He's it also it talks about how uh, Toys for Bob's Toys for Bob was taken off of. Um, They're the original developers of Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, they were taken off Crash Bandicoot, to, and we covered that. And they were put on uh, Call of Duty. Uh, so, what I think. Okay, here we go. We're all hoping that we'll be able to work with them when the deal closes to make sure we have resources to work on franchises that I love from my childhood and that the teams really want to get, Spencer said. I'm really looking forward to these conversations. I really think it's about adding resources and increasing capability. Um, and then he goes on to talk about how uh, he doesn't trust uh, big tech to take over a company um, like uh, Activision Blizzard, meaning he would see it as a bad thing if Google bought them or uh, Tencent bought them or Amazon, Amazon bought them. <clears throat> yes, yeah. And he says that while he, well, I'm not saying he's saying this, I'm paraphrasing, but he says that he would trust Nintendo or Sony to take over any of these big studios because he knows at the end of the day that they're in the gaming business and they're they're most likely going to do what's right for gamers um but he does not trust these uh big tech companies to get involved so is microsoft part of that yeah microsoft is but the difference is is that microsoft has an established their xbox team right they have this established part of gaming that goes back to the original Xbox and Microsoft games, which which has been around a lot longer than these newer tech companies. Um, yes, but they, but, they are and, still part of I, that. Yeah, you're right. They're still yeah, part because 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 historically speaking, a lot of the third party studios that they've had haven't been as successful under the Microsoft brand as they were before. I think a, a really good example is Rare. Yes. Uh, uh, Rare became a shell of its former self. I don't know if that's because of Microsoft. I can't. I, I'm just saying. Yes. The, um, Halo. It's coincident. It's coincidental. Halo. Three, four, three studios yes. and Halo. Uh, you know, Halo really sunk um, to some pretty bad depths. Ex except Halo 5. for now, Halo Infinite. Finally. Yeah, yeah. Halo Infinite's been getting good. Yeah. Good. Um, <clears throat> good feedback but ultimately it's not complete yet yeah. and it is a games as a service yes so i would still kind of I, I know i know it's gotten like a lot of good reviews and a weird like game of the year type nomination of some kind but i think it's uh a little too early to call that and, just yet and notice how it's called halo infinite it's not called Correct. halo 6 yeah yeah so that's very important to keep your mind on so yes you're right he he is in a he he's talking about these other tech competitors, but at the same time, Microsoft is one of those people, <laughs> or yeah. not people. I don't think corporations are people, but one of those <laughs> entities. Um, yes, I think making corporations people is one of the worst things our government has ever done. Um, and anyways, uh, so 
I, but I do like to hear him talk about these older forgotten titles. Yes, uh, I do like yeah. that. But 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 the reality is <clears throat> with the, and it, it's funny. And here I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put this in perspective. You know, we've got this Game Pass idea that we know is the future goal of Xbox. Xbox will not be a physical box. It is a service. Mm -hmm. And and Game Pass is the heart of that service. So when I hear him, you know, wax nostalgic about uh, Guitar Hero, I'm like, bruh, you're not about to make some peripherals for Game Pass. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. Um... So, so I, I'm, I'm not going to see a Steel Battalion remake with uh you know that huge controller <laughs> yeah brought back for game pass just think just think of the ridiculous the ridiculousness of that <laughs> well so and that's funny you mentioned that because i think we're going to be headed back towards that but with v what do you with mean? vr i think i uh, think i think vr mm. is going to head back towards that peripheral uh landscape that we used to have in gaming um, because when you're in VR and yes. you're doing certain things, you, you, you can hold an actual item and it'll simulate the experience much better. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I have Farpoint VR yeah. for PS5 and that is like the <clears throat> big, like kind of machine gun or rifle type peripheral. And that, that's awesome. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, uh, just visualizing that concept, I think I would love a guitar hero in VR and just, you know, having the guitar peripheral playing that and then being within the game in the VR style. Yeah, you would. That sounds pretty, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and you know how, like, in Guitar Hero, the way it's set up is <laughs> you see the stage in the background. Yes. And then you see the floor leading to the stage is all the notes, right? And then you well, see like that, but, the crowd on the sides. But, th but think think of that concept. Yeah. And I'm just thinking in terms of VR, where you know we've got that three dimensional space. What if you're in VR, you're playing Guitar Hero, and yes, you're seeing that streaming line of notes, but you're able to move your head. So instead of just seeing the crowd, you move back and you're looking at your drummer, and you're rocking out with your drummer. Yeah. And the beats are there, and you're like able to see the entire band. That sounds so immersive and awesome. Yeah, yeah, and 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 instead, the yeah, like you're saying, the scene would be reversed. You'd be on the stage instead of yeah. looking at the stage. Yeah. So I, yeah, I I get what you're saying. They're gonna make it. Uh, they're focused on this service, and this is how I'm, I view it. PC games have been digital for a long time, right? Yes. And the PC market always dictates eventually what's going to happen to the console market um and you're seeing it now with game pass right um yes now the console market is much slower to adapt um but you're right uh, eventually you're, it's gonna like look at google look at the way they set up uh stadia and it, i i just saw a video from spawn wave where he he went back into google stadia two years after Yes, I saw yeah. that one too. <laughs> and it was <laughs> it's uh it was kind of sad. It was still full of lag. It was still full of lag. And but but notice how he was saying like, yeah, you got this sleek controller and that's it. Right? <laughs> like that's the yeah. extent of what you own is this The cloud the cloud gaming technology just isn't there yet. It's not there Y E T. Yet. Yes. The the yet is really important because you know, with concepts that we've gotten, I mean, how many times have we seen concepts roll out hashtag too early? A uh, good example is the PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation Vita is a Nintendo Switch. And look how beautiful the Nintendo Switch is working now. Look at um, On Live, yeah. the streaming platform that came out in what, the early aughts? <laughs> Uh, you know, and we, we've got something like Stadia coming out well after that. And then Stadia, granted, it didn't have the foothold nor the foundation uh, within the gaming uh, the gaming environment mm -hmm. that it needed to. But Microsoft slash Xbox are practically doing what Stadia is doing. They, they, but they, but but they have that infrastructure. They've yes. already had that foothold, and they already um, have gener a, a couple generations of gamers. Correct. Yeah. And and 
The thing is, is that they just reached 25 million subs on Game Pass. That's impressive. Yeah. That's the thing to scoff at. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I do. And, and let me be clear. I am not for any of this monopolization of the gaming industry. I am just not for it. I like having studios. <laughs> De yes, I like it to be more decentralized. Studios, this studio works on this, this studio works on that. Yes, they can be invested in by Sony or Nintendo or whatever, but this is not what that is. This is, this is complete top-down control, right? Oh yes, and it, 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 it's it's horrific. Yeah. thinking about this. Yeah, this is this is this is monopolization, like at an extremely crazy rate. Now, well, how about you elaborate on that? Like, um, what is what is your vision of of the Microsoft Xbox Game Pass future? So here's the thing, and I know he's nostalgic talking about these older titles, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer, but you're right. When, a, when one organization, right, takes over something as big as Activision Blizzard, which was doing a shitty job, I'll have to say, but... It was doing a shitty job, but, and, and, and I, I apologize for yeah, interjecting, yeah. Call of Duty is literally one of the best-selling media of all time across all demographics. Yes. Or all genres. Yeah. Um, you know, it beats out movies. It beats out, obviously, books and music uh it's it's a, an incredible thing or it's incredible ip yeah no i agree and what i was going to say is that even though they've been doing a shitty job l recently they are still they were just focused on games right that's yes. what they did they focused on games and and look how much trouble they were having managing their games right now you take Microsoft, which is this gigantic Uber corporation, right? <laughs> They're not going to be able to handle these small titles like he's talking about in the proper way because it's too top down, right? If your organization is very top down, people are always reliant on getting the word from up above. They don't want to make risky, creative decisions. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're going to hold off. They're not going to say, hey, man, what if we did this cool thing? No, no, it's got to be run by, it's got to be uh, approved by corporate. You know what I'm saying? And that's why what happens is when a lot of these companies monopolize, if they're not able to manage everything that they, they monopolize, they, they end up, they end up uh, merging it, right? They merge a lot of it. And they shudder a lot of things, right? So, of course, I don't. Uh, it, yeah, I don't think what I th I get what he's saying, but I don't buy it. You know what I mean? I I think just all the games that Blizzard has active right now, and Activision, that's going to be a hell of a transition. You know what I mean? And let's not forget, a lot of the people who are linchpins in these games are fleeing like like rats off of a burning ship or whatever you know what i mean like well activision blizzard is a shell of its former self oh actually um, that was a bad metaphor they're not rats uh these are good hard-working people but you get you get what i'm saying they're fleeing no i i, I definitely yeah. i definitely get what yeah, you're yeah. saying a lot of people have uh, uh, you know jumped off ship they're, yeah they're, they're jump 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 they've ship. jumped ship because they they don't like this they they're creatives and they want to you know they want to have a say they want to have a say. Of course. Yeah. But the thing is, um, and I completely agree with everything you just said. Yeah. Um, and I think a good litmus test or barometer uh, going forward is what we see coming out of Bethesda. Yes. And the reason why I say that is because Bethesda has, you know, a, a couple of subsidiaries under that, under their belt as well. And we've got something coming out like Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, done by um, this is Shinji Mikami's group mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, Ghostwire Tango, Tango Gameworks and Ghostwire Tokyo according to what you were just talking about wouldn't exist because it's not a huge AAA game if anything it's very much like that B-level game that you would expect from uh, the PS3, PS2 era yeah. no, no offense to the game it's just, it's, just, it, it's not 
It's not a AAA game. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. That being said, we see things that are going to be coming out, like Star Citizen and Elder Scrolls Six. Starfield. 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 Pardon. Star Citizen is completely different. I apologize. Yeah. Starfield. Uh, and those are the big, like, AAA, like, we expect millions of people to buy kinds of games that you're talking about. Yes. So, looking forward after Ghostwire Tokyo, I want to see what the output looks like on their end to see if it falls in line with that. Because I really hope it doesn't. I mean... Yeah. I'm Now, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not calling for their failure. I'm just saying this is what tends to happen. You know what I mean? Correct. No, and you're yeah. right. You're right. I, yeah. I, do, I do see. I mean, we, we're seeing it right now with uh, Sony and um, Naughty Dog in like how like some of the studios like Bend are being pushed to do stuff for Last of Us rather than, you know, something for Days Gone or another new IP. Yeah. And, and what happens is they leave. So the, the the workers leave because they're like, this is not what I want to do. You know, these are a lot of these people are creative people. You know what I mean? They get into this field because they want to work on a project that's meaningful to them. You know what I mean? Something that they can look. I've I I worked at a video game company for a short time, and they put me on a project I didn't like, and uh, it's just and you got fired. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, yeah. I'm kidding. No, I didn't get fired. Um, <laughs> You're like deuces. The, co the, the company's defunct now. I'm not going to name names, but they just had some poor management decisions. and But but they got taken over by a bigger company. Mm -hmm. And what happened was when they got taken over, their quality started to suffer. And people started to leave. And the the, the, the parent company was like, well, we don't want to deal with this anymore and shut it down. Whereas if you're a more decentralized studio, you're going to fight tooth and nail to keep your studio open. You know what I mean? Because that's your studio. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, that's what people have to realize here. I mean, you're right about bringing up Sony. They kill their own stuff all the time. <laughs> I mean, like like the Vita, right? Unfortunately. And, yeah. It's, it, was, it's, it was light years ahead of the Switch. It was an amazing product. And if they don't get the numbers... They, they have no, um, uh, I don't know what the correct, the correct term is. I know people use like, you know, they're not married to it, but that's a more of like a yeah. negative way. I was going to say no, no qualms. No, not no, <laughs> no qualms. qualms in like, um, they have no love, right? They have no love because it, these are, these are big corporate decisions, right? Mm -hmm. These people didn't spend hours and hours you know working on the vita they don't know how beautiful uh, uh, and elegant of a machine it is they just see the numbers and they're like oh we're spending this much for staff uh and this is how much we're bringing in okay let's kill it and that's what happens with a lot of these you know these giant studios or the, even the small studios that get uh swallowed up is that the people at the top making the decisions they just see numbers that's it. Yes. They have no love for the actual project. So to them, it's very cut and dry. It's not performing right. Shut it down. But how many indie studios have we seen put out a game that fails and their next game is amazing? You know what I mean? Ah, so many times. So many, so many times. times. So many times. But that can't happen when you're under a giant corporation a lot of the times because they just don't tolerate uh, they don't have the patience for that. So I think, and I mean, and, and, and like, like, like to say, to, to bring this back to the gaming space, games have, games cost so much to create. Oh yeah. Uh, that we are losing and, and we're losing in terms of large corporations spending towards creating games like B level games, like Ghostwire Tokyo, if you will. Um, and some of these games are games that I personally love, uh, like the lower level games that become like cult favorites. Yeah. Th and, those are the uh, ones that, that do space, become cult favorites. And that space is being, uh, taken up by, and I, 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 I enjoy that this is happening, but ultimately it's like, you know, there is a limit indie, indie titles, 
indie titles, indie games, yeah. indie corporations are taking over that space. But I don't know. Is it, would it be too much for me to say that we're getting also a lot of oversaturation of sameness because there's not um, they can't spend as much money as a large corporation could? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying there, there, there's, uh, there was an age where I was hungry for Metroidvanias, and now there's too many. Being, there, there's too <laughs> yeah, many. Yeah, exactly. You can't keep up. <laughs> you can't keep up. Um, ultimately, I think it's ultimately, I think it's a good thing that these indie studios are able to, oh, definitely. yeah, create I mean, these I games. Love, I love yeah. indies, these indie games. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. But at the same time, it's like maybe the indie studios need they're yes a lot of them are trying to make a living they're trying to survive right yes but i think every once in a while you get a studio like um <laughs> housemark where they create returnal you, oh you know gosh. what i mean and but but look what happened after they did it they immediately got uh sweeped up by sony <laughs> you know what i mean like so and and well no no returnal was made for sony they were sw swept up by sony before right i don't i thought it was i i, I thought oh, it was i'm after. sorry i could be wrong yeah i thought it was after but bottom line the result is the same right yeah they're under sony's control now um but look what happened before that their game before that didn't do so well what was it i can't remember the title um oh my gosh but but i'm having a hard time next mock they made next machina yeah but they made another game after that that i think is what you're talking yeah. about I'm, I'm having a hard time re recalling i can't remember i just i i read a, a i read about in an article because someone was uh doing a deep dive into the studio and i didn't know much mm. about them but their game before returnal wasn't a hit like it wasn't popular and well returnal itself isn't a hit either by by by, by like the triple a standards no 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 but it's a hit as far as like yeah yeah it's a definitely yeah. a critical yeah. and like for the people that played it and love it yeah <laughs> they, they know what's up yeah so so i think what we're trying to say is that activision i didn't like activision and i thought they were doing a poor job i loved blizzard pre-activision i will say that I loved almost every game that they came out with. Um, <laughs> I grew up on these games. I grew up on StarCraft. I grew up on WarCraft. Or, uh, yeah, WarCraft. Um, Diablo. Diablo. Uh, man, I remember playing Diablo 1 in, in high school. Um, I remember getting StarCraft in high school in 1998. Um, so, and then War, uh, World of Warcraft, I, I started that when I was in the military. And I had a, uh, a roommate who was playing it, and I started playing it. I was like, don't get me wrong. I had played EverQuest and all that before that, so I already knew about him. But I was like, it was just an a amazing time in my life. And one of our good friends uh, who passed away a couple years ago, he loved that game. You, you, you remember that? Yeah. He used to spend hours and hours. We'd, we would have to tell him, like, dude, take a break man <laughs> like, but he just loved it and it like he told the what he told me about it was he was like it just makes me feel calm because he was having a lot of stress and stuff at the time and he was just like this game just makes me just chill and i need that you know these are the types of games we're talking about you know what i mean it's not just yeah, you know, it's this game or whatever. No, these games mean a lot to people. So I think it's, you're right. We should look at what happens with Bethesda in, in the next few years. And then we should see what happens with some of these communities and how they treat them, you know, especially World of Warcraft, right? Um, yes. And just see what happens because it would be, you know, it's always a shame to see and it doesn't have to be bought out to be neglected. I mean, we bring up Konami all the time. I mean, they're they're on our list, you know, of uh, mistreating their own IPs. <laughs> like, they're a pretty large offender. Yeah, yes. they're a pretty large offender. So it doesn't have to be bought out, but 
Yeah, this is a this is a serious thing. I mean, this is a big thing, and it could change the landscape of gaming for the foreseeable future. And I mean, I mean, well, here's the thing: we can't we 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 have to we have to admit that the landscape of gaming is completely changing as it is currently. Yes. Uh, and Game Pass is doing that. Xbox and Microsoft are pioneering the way. They have not only the power, but they have the capability, um, and they're obviously flexing their muscles with this purchase of Activision Blizzard. Yeah, and you and me are clinging on to a dying um, <laughs> era of gaming. And yes, and I, yes. I will tell everyone here. Um, I, you know what? I'm probably going to do a video on this at some point, <laughs> where I'm going to go over all the. Uh, online stores that you and me shop at and um, to let people know you know where to get these games but yeah that'd be cool you know limited run games special reserve strictly limited um, can you name a few off the top of your head I mean you took the three big ones yeah. man <laughs> um, <laughs> those, are the, those are the ones that Nicholas. usually frequent Nic uh, Nicholas they sell they sell uh, in brick and mortar yeah. stores though they sell through Amazon and stuff like that yeah. um yeah, I mean, I love Nicola's special edition, or not special editions, because the regular editions are like current special yeah. editions. They come with like manuals and keychains and little goodies inside. Yeah. That's like unheard of nowadays. It's like, yeah, yay, I'm happy I got a disc. Yeah. So, so, so to all <laughs> the manual, all the people like that, like me and Josie, who are, we're we're starting to feel obsolete. And let's be honest, uh, the way YouTube is changing is also changing the gaming landscape. Because they don't, they, they don't promote um, uh, small-time gaming content creators anymore. You know what I mean? They, they, yes. they promote mostly corporate or corporate-friendly content. Yes. And As long as they pass some kind of litmus test. Yeah. And if you're a streamer or, or, or a video, a YouTube guy, <laughs> and you are not with, if you're not corporate and you make one mistake you'll get banned or you'll get demonetized. You know what I mean? There's no, so the, the landscape is changing and you know, you and me, we're trying to grasp and hold on. And that's why it's important to um, support indie games and to support indie game publishers like limited run, you know? Oh yes. Um, and even if it, there comes a day where they, are like, look, guys, we can't sustain anymore. We can't create physical games anymore, right? Uh, even if that day comes, I'm still going to try to, you know, support the digital version of whatever there is. You know what I mean? Whatever's left. So, yeah. It's so funny that you say that. I'm definitely not of that camp. <laughs> well, yeah, you have, you're, you're stocking up for the the gaming apocalypse <laughs> yes yeah. yes i actually i actually made some high profile pur purchases recently yeah. um but uh what's it called in general my my stance is i actually do agree with you yeah. to kind of turn the tables here a little bit and but but in regards to how i will support it will most predominantly be through steam yeah, and it'll be PC only rather than purchasing it digital on some kind of console. A good example. I don't think this is is Kingdom Hearts going to be covered at all today. No, but I I saw that they're they're uh, about to release the cloud version. So that's a that's an ex excellent example. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is getting the cloud version on Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that's going to be running on the Nintendo Switch. They don't have a physical version planned. And, you know, these games are PS2 slash PS3 remakes that have been high defified for the PS4 uh, or the Xbox One. And then Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts 2.8 are the only games that have been made actually from the ground up next gen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't see any excuse for the previous games. But MVG, yeah. Modern Vintage Gamer, uh, did a video explaining the business realities of why they would do such a thing. And the reason being it does take time to, to get those physical editions created and done. And it's much easier to just have that cloud version hanging up in the sky and just streaming to whatever console to play it. Um, damned 
if there'd be lag or any kind of connectivity issues, yeah. which is a major problem, especially nowadays. Yeah. Um, it, it, will it improve in the future? Yeah, but not now. And so my response to that was literally, I, I, I even showed you, Geo, I showed you yesterday. I purchased the all-in-one package for the PlayStation 4 of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I had that. And that, that was $25. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I bought that for $25. That's literally everything that's in the cloud version that they are selling on Switch for $80. Yes, and and it's physical. You own the discs. You can do what you want with them. You can resell them. You can give them to somebody. No, no, no issues with lag. No issues with lag. Um, you know what's really going to... What will really be a travesty <laughs> is if someone sells a cloud game on a physical cartridge i wouldn't be surprised i mean i i still haven't even though devil may cry 3 is the best version on nintendo switch mm -hmm. because of the opportunity to go ahead and switch between styles mm -hmm. without having to be at the main menu uh, at the beginning of each chapter or level uh that which already that that so many gameplay possibilities. That's such a great game. Yeah. Uh, I'm not purchasing it because it's only available digitally. And even the physical version that they brought up for the Switch, it only includes Devil May Cry 1 and 2. And the third version is a download code. Yes. So these download code type dealies are already being sold. I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna was a download code. I forget. Well, I, here, I, here's, here, well we can find out. I have one. Hold on. Here's the thing, Monster Hunter World, uh, tor uh, Iceborn, Iceborn, shoot, Monster Hunter World Iceborn DLC. There is no physical copy of that game. They only had a physical like case that they sold. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you we're already kind of there. Yeah. And um, they did the same thing with um, Damn, Endwalker, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, every version of Final Fantasy XIV, in terms of their um, expansions, mm -hmm. uh, they've always had a physical copy within their collector's edition that includes, you know, uh, the download and whatever expansion was there. Obviously, yes, it's an MMO. You're going to have to be downloading stuff anyway. But I'm just saying it came with a physical disc. Mm -hmm. uh, the Endwalker version doesn't even come with a disc they don't sell it there's it's only digital yeah uh the only physical representation of ownership of that game is maybe the collector's edition where you get you know a box that has endwalker art on it but that's about it yeah the last uh world of warcraft game i bought i actually have it was mists of pandaria <laughs> and that had the discs in it but if you want it, like if you wanted a physical version of world of warcraft um on the newer ones, I think you had to get the collector's edition. They still, they still had the discs in there, but they're so hard to get. I mean, they're gone yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, I mean, even the Endwalker collector's edition, I was lucky to get it. Yeah. And that, and that didn't come with the physical copy of the disc or any kind of disc at, at all. So, like, I, I mean, I'm part of the problem right there, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll completely fess up to it uh, because I'm a Square Enix like shill <laughs> uh so here i am well like, no you're not, not buying the cloud version of Switch, you're not a shill still... because you still criticize them you're just you're just yeah. a, you're just a fan you know yeah yeah i'm a, I'm a big fan yeah. and uh but i mean like 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 it's i i i should be consistent and it's very difficult to stay consistent when it's like oh i want that Endwalker gear i want you know this little collector's edition that i can physically put in my room and see it and be happy because it gives me that dopamine kick yeah <laughs> yeah no no i'm i dude i totally get it um so yeah i mean that it's a it's a crazy thing and uh it's a big change. It's a big change on the landscape, and and we we we've seen it coming for years. And I just hope Microsoft doesn't mishandle any of any of this their IPs. I mean, I really want a new StarCraft. I I really want uh, a new uh, expansion to World of Warcraft, but uh, one that you know isn't like the past one that made me kind of quit. Uh, I want. 
Diablo 4 to be good, you know? I there, there's I want a new uh Warcraft, you know? Um uh maybe a new remaster of Warcraft 3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh one that's not crappy. But <laughs> 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 um Yeah, so yeah, all those things uh they're very important and um yeah, we're going to be keeping an eye on uh Starfield uh coming out this year um yeah and also tokyo uh what's it called uh ghostwire tokyo ghostwire tokyo yeah also i mean what are they going to do with the fallout series uh fallout 76 what are they going to do with that yeah are they, are they going to jump ship yet <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good question because the game has fixed a lot of the stuff that was previously wrong with it yes. there's people who actually enjoy it now so yeah i mean people have enjoyed it from the get-go <laughs> Far and few between as they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, Microsoft purchased Activision Blizzard, um, and that is, I was shocked. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, the world got shook. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Uh, are you a fan of their games? Are you not a fan of their games? And let us know why. And also, you know, chime in on how you feel about the uh, digital versus uh, physical debate as well. I know some people could care less, but I know some people actually like to own their games outright. So let us know what you think about all these issues in the comments, and we'd love to hear from you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Games I Speak. If you like the episode, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.